hi guys you are welcome back to my youtube channel this is your girl martha and today i have an interesting story time to tell so before we go into the story time i would like you to like share and subscribe to this video please give a thumbs up to this video or other videos and subscribe to be part of the family basically we are here for story time so just give me a few minutes so that, you know, so that you can listen to this story and make sure you subscribe to the channel so today i thought of coming with something different to give you a story time about a time that i felt insecure and very much insecure and in danger to risk my life when i was in uganda so one time it was around 2000 around 2017 so i was coming from work i had got my first job as a real estate marketer it was a small part time so at that time if you know one day girl one day girl that is in makere so I had been doing my work, marketing, helping here and there, and the month ended. So when the month ended, I was paid for the first time. And do you know how much I was paid? 80,000 Uganda shillings. So the, the whole pay was supposed to be 300. By that time, my boss gave me um 80,000 Uganda shillings. So it was around nine o'clock. It was very late. Nine is like late, late for me still be in the city and not at home so you know when you come from um ham towers if you know ham towers in kampala that is opposite mccary university so i crossed over the road and you know, as i walked straight to you know the one day get around about i was going to the one day get around about to get taxis that were going to take me home and you know that the, a taxi came uh, saying, uh, Chisasi, Chisasi, Bukoto, Kamocha. That kind is Kam, Molago, Kamocha, Chisasi, Bukoto. You know, that's how they were trying to, to say to market the people for the people to come into the taxi, Kampala taxis. Hmm. So I just entered the taxi because it, it was full. It looked full, like there were people in there. There was the conductor, there were some people at the back, and some people in the middle. So I'm like, oh, this is a full taxi. Maybe since I'm not getting it from the stage, as because we're going to the to the roundabout and there are traffic lights, I entered. So as we cross over the roundabout of that row of the road of one day roundabout, the the driver, no, the the driver said, "Can I see the time on your phone?" So I just picked out my little phone. It was a small smartphone, and then I, I said, I I switched on the power button so you could see that the flashlight. You could see it's a smartphone, and so I said, "Oh, it is like twelve past nine. Okay, I kept the phone. So we go in the taxi. We go via Mlago. We go." So the taxi continues moving, but when we reached a time, the only thing I could remember was when the the conductor who sits behind the front. This is the front seat where I was seated, and this well, there was another man, and another man who was a driver. So I hear the conductor behind me saying, the door is opening you're going to fall out the door is opening and he's trying to tell me to hold put my hand through the window of the car of the of the minibus 
to cross the door, to hold the door. So I kept hanging up on the door. But before I knew it, like in in two minutes, they told me the door can't open, the door is 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 broken, so you have to get out. So they pushed me out of the car. I was confused. I didn't know what had happened. I was not in my senses. So I have a feeling and I still think up to this day that I was drugged because I felt a bit dizzy and I did not remember the memory from the time. I, I, the only memory I had was when I showed the driver the time. When I showed him the time on my phone and crossing over the roundabout, the rest I do not remember. In the span of like five minutes, whatever happened to me, I do not remember whatever they dragged me with. So they tell me to fall, to go off. So they throw me and there was a big trench over alongside the road. And those are the drainages. So I almost fell inside the drainage and I would have hit my head. And to make matters worse, there were speeding cars from behind me. So I almost got run over. I didn't know what to do. I just stood. But then another thing came into mind was that I have no phone. I don't, I don't remember. I think I did not have the phone. They, they took the phone. Yes, they took the phone. And then when I checked in my bag as well, there was the money that had been paid, the first salary, 80,000 Uganda shillings, was not in the bag. Everything, they checked every and everything in the bag. The money had been in the middle. I had all my books, my diaries. Everything was in tatters. So I started to panic. I'm like, how am I going to go home? But I do remember I had 1,000 Uganda shillings that I'd put in my, pocket, my skirt pocket. I remember it was a short blue skirt. So I got, I walk and I go to it, um, a nearby town. But it was a few minutes walk because I could see a petrol station. Then I could, I started remembering the place. So I went to the stage to get another taxi. I had only 1,000 Uganda shillings. So I went in a taxi or the cab and of course it didn't it doesn't that was not enough money to make me get home because i only only had one thousand Uganda shillings so i went in the taxi and then went home so when we reached like the border border stage or it's the stage where there are motorcycles that are that act like a taxi service so I don't remember, I just said, I don't remember very well, but I just, there were men there. I told them, I've been robbed and I want to go home and I have no money. So one of the guys volunteered to drive me home because they knew where I used to stay because these are the people I used to get uh, to board every, every day, either from home or when I'm going to town. So they are the people that used to drive me on their border borders. It's it so happened that even the next day I could not remember the person that helped me in the night to drop me home. So I think it's a good Samaritan that Samaritan that helped me get home. So bottom line, that story I've never forgotten it. I'll always remember it. It is really really unsafe for women in Kampala city. You have to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant. And so I'm saying this story because right now I'm, I'm in Ghana living in the UK and I have found it to be a safe country. Much as there is crime here and there, people grabbing phones, some people being kidnapped, but on rare occasions. But I want to say that I felt more safe in the UK than in Uganda. Because when you say these things, people may be like, oh, you're just saying it because you're now in the West. But the truth of the matter is that if you have not experienced insecurity, 
in a certain place, in a country, in an area, you may not know the gravity of it. Because I can assure you, I assure you, I don't know whatever they injected in me at that time. Because there is, I remember memories of my journey and some memories, I do not remember them. So, but I thank God and I feel, I hope they did not trap me because anyone would have felt it. Because uh, when I reached home, I remember I sat on the veranda. I thought people I used to stay with. I was crying. I was in tears. I was confused. But later on, like at midnight of that day, of the night, of the more of that of that day, midnight or, because I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I started getting, gaining my senses, remembering some bits of the journey. But there is that memories that were were erased, and I do not remember exactly what really really happened but whatever those taxi men drag with i do not know so i just want to tell you that if you're in kampala you're a woman or you're a man or whoever however you identify just stay safe because if you have not experienced such an experience you may think it is not true but i martha i have experienced that uncertainty maybe i was they could have been armed robbers maybe they could have been i don't know but basically that's my story if you really like my story just comment and tell me your thoughts and let me know have you ever been unsafe in a place have you encountered such situations of insecurity and how did you how did you survive how did you survive what was your escape plan so in summary i was robbed i was dragged i forgot some bits of that memory because i don't know what they dragged me with and i survived death because i almost fell into a trench and i almost got run over by cars that were coming approaching so but i want to thank god and also thank the universe the universe that really god you still have me here for a reason and that's why i'm proud to say that I feel safe where I am now in the UK because I have not encountered things of the sort. Much as I have to be vigilant, but the gravity of being dragged and being robbed in the young hours of the night from work, my first salary, you never want to have that experience. But anyway, share your stories, comment, like, share, and subscribe. I remain your girl, mother. And if you want me to come with some more um, life stories, I will pop in one at a time. So comment and tell me what you think. I love you all and subscribe. Bye and I love you. Peace and love.